tonight in a 15-round international contest. World heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali defends his title against George Chavallo of Toronto, the Canadian heavyweight champion. This 15-round championship contest is coming to you direct from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Greetings, everybody. No matter where you're watching, greetings from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. We have a tremendous crowd, estimated at up to 14,000 people on hand for the heavyweight championship fight between Muhammad Ali and the Canadian champion, George Chavallo. And with this huge crowd in attendance, there's a feeling of excitement and anticipation as both fighters are now in the ring. They have just uh, put their gloves on and we're just about two minutes away from the bell for round one. And now it's a great pleasure for me to introduce one of the outstanding figures in the world of sport. He's certainly no stranger to the television screen. The great fullback with the Cleveland Browns of the National Football League, Jim Brown. Oh, well, thank you, Al. It's a pleasure working with you tonight, and it's also a pleasure to say hello to all of those folks out there, and especially the ones in Cleveland. Jim, there's something about a heavyweight championship fight, isn't it? That feel about ringside. That... That's right, Al. It's different than anything else that I've ever participated in. I'm not in the ring, but I'm as nervous as I can be. You know, it's something about it. I don't know what it is. You have... Uh had the feeling though before many championship games how do you feel just about two minutes before kickoff well you're scared to death really you're waiting for uh, the ball to come and when you get hit it's all over then you're ready to play before the, before the kickoff it's really tough all right jim let's switch our camera's attention to the ring now and get into position Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the dignitaries in the ring with us at this moment. You're cut off. Working in George Chavallo's corner, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful brown bomber, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis. <laughs> A man at ringside coloring the fight on TV, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Football of the Cleveland Browns, Jimmy Brown. We have in the ring also former Canadian heavyweight champion from Toronto, Earl Wall. Earl Wall, ladies and gentlemen. Another former Canadian heavyweight champion from Montreal, Hall of Fame, Bob Clarou. Bob Clarou. Here's the heavyweight champion of the wrestling world, ladies and gentlemen, from Edmonton, Alberta, Gene Kaminsky. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Brooklyn Blockbuster, the one, the only, the great, Rocky Marciano. This is the main event of the First in the white corner, from Louisville, Kentucky, weighing 214 and one half pounds, wearing the white gloves with the black stripes, Muhammad Ali. And now, in the red corner, from Toronto, weighing 216 pounds, wearing the white cup for the white face, George Chavallo. Fifteen rounds, and here is referee Jackie Sears with his instructions.
Well, they're both charged up. Make no mistake about that. The bell for round one. Trunks scoring with a left and a right. Chevallo in black trunks. A solid left hook scored by Chevallo. champ seems to be serious at times and when he's serious it looks like it's going to be a good fight but of course every once in a while he likes to test himself and he's playing a little bit Shavala has never been knocked off his feet and of course has never been knocked out you think the champ can do it to him i think he's going to have to do it i think if it goes all the way it could be a very tough fight for him that's herb ungerman in uh, Shavala's corner the man in the center is ted mcwhorter his trainer and Whitey Benstein is that white head that just flashes into your picture from time to time. Ten seconds to the beginning of round two. The champion is up on his feet, ready for action. And here comes Shalala, round two.
Gallo weighed in at 216, seven pounds more than expected. He said, it's my heaviest or my roughest and toughest fight. Gallo hit him with a good left hook to the face in that exchange. about it, Chirello, while he is not the Rocky Marciano type of puncher who can take you out with one shot, both punches to the body, would they wear you down over four or five rounds? Well, actually, I don't think he's going to be able to do that for four or five rounds. I think Clay is going to have to uh, move a little more after a few rounds because if he takes those blows, it's got to wear him down somewhat. But if you notice, the blows are all on the side. and There's nothing getting uh, on the inside of him. Clay was out early at the 10-second whistle. Now he makes a face at the referee, and here they come for round three. The champ is determined now to display his boxing skills. Very fast with hands and feet. Possibly the fastest heavyweight of all time in that department. He's scoring consistently with the left jab. Play. Try to pull his way forward and get back to the body. But as Jim Brown pointed out, Clay is protecting the midsection while the blows are going to the side and back. Clay is completely unorthodox. He's liable to lead with a right or a left. You don't know what to expect. Chevalos 
solidly with about three of those. A stunning left jab. That's rocking George. Ten seconds to go. Well, ending round three. Miranda Cassie has played his corner there. Jim, how does he look to you at this point? He looks like he's in better condition than I expect him to be, Hal, because he did bring training camp uh, quite a few times uh, before this fight came about. But he looks like he's ready to go for, uh, well, 12 or 13 rounds. I watched him, Jim. He came in here uh, weighing 225, and he weighed in today at 214 and a half. He took the weight off rapidly, and in the gym, he looked as if he could go all night. Of course, uh, this could be telling, because when you take weight off that fast, it sort of weakens you. Of course, he doesn't look weak out there right now. I think, too, if he does take his best shots at George Shimano, whose corner we're watching now, and he doesn't put him away, it could be a discouraging factor for him. That's very true, and I think that's the big question tonight. Can he actually knock this man out? Clay is out of the ring, though the bell has just run now. Here we go for round four.
Mr. Vallow is as strong as a bull if he can corner him. Jab collecting solidly. chances, I think that uh, it'll be a great fight. But uh, if he stands up and if he moves slow, it's just not going to be a good fight. But I think this round is uh, a good one for him. If he keeps it up, if he keeps moving, if he has the stamina, he can put up a real good fight. With about 30 or 40 seconds to go, he got on a smashing left hook and the left it connected solidly. I think it gave George, whom we can see here, a little bit of confidence, didn't it? That's right. I hope he comes out in this round and continues that type of attack because I think that's the only way that he is going to win this round. It's his only chance. The champion is standing. Angelo Dundee, his manager, giving him last-minute instructions. Seconds to 
go with the round. Jim, how's he look at this point? He looks a little tired at this point, Hal. I think uh, he knows that it's going to take a lot of blows to knock Shavalo out. Shavalo keeps moving in in this way. I think the champ might become a little worried. Seems to me that on the two occasions that uh, the champ has switched to the uppercut, George Shavalo here was able to move in uh, with uh, good left hooks uh, to the face and body. Those were the only two times in the fight that he really scored. That's very true. He's ignoring the jab whenever he can get play on the ropes. And he's coming in and trying to get his blows uh, in at that particular time. One thing that I can note, I think that Terrell has a stronger jab than the champion. Because I saw uh, these two fight before, and his jab kept Shavalo back a lot better. Here we go with round seven. And a lot of people didn't think Shivalo would be here for round seven. But he's here and still going strong. The champion appears to be showing a little more dedication to his work just about now.
around eight. The left hook just grazed his face, just missed. has never gone more than 12 rounds. to get in close, but failed to score. We're halfway through round eight. One minute to go in round eight. You can again see the mark on Shimano's forehead high up near the hairline, but it certainly does not look serious. His left eye is beginning to swell, Shimano's, and that's from the left jabs of the champion. 30 seconds left in round eight. Well, <laughs> hit him with a good right hook to the body. Ten seconds. Toronto boy, right on your screen there now. There's not much doubt about who's the favorite, is there? Oh, not at all. The action is good right now, Hal, but the question in my mind, and the question probably in the minds of all of our theater watchers, is does Clay actually have a knockout punch? And I think that's going to play a big part in this fight, because if he has to fight for 15 rounds, he's going to get off the tide because he has to move. Chavalo is going to keep coming in, and uh, in the last few rounds, it might be very interesting. There's one thing you can bet on with Chevallo. He won't quit. He's tough, strong, durable, and he'll go until he's exhausted. The champion up on his feet again as we get set for round nine.
Champion scores consistently with the left jab. But Chevallo shows little sign that it bothers him that much. One minute to go in the round. with as much authority as he was in earlier rounds. 30 seconds to go in the ninth round. Chavallo scored with a right hook in the body and took the cover on the kick in an exchange. Ten seconds to the end of the round. Get a look at George Chevallo. They're working on that left eye. That left eye uh, doesn't look like a problem, does it, Jim? No, it really doesn't look like a problem at this time. I think if Chevallo has the stamina, these last few rounds are going to be quite interesting because I know that Clay has to be somewhat tired at this particular point. You know, Chevallo has always had the stamina, but this time he weighed in at 216, which is about seven pounds above his ordinary fighting weight. That load may start to tell, too. That's very true. Here we go with round 10 coming up. There's the bell. Beneath this ring is a wooden floor. And beneath the wooden floor, the ice surface for the National Hockey League games. One of which takes place here tomorrow night. So they couldn't take the ice off.
Shabalo is trying to corner him and hammer away at the bread basket. Shabalo has taken the champion's best shot without giving an inch. The left hook connected, but not as solidly as Shabalo would have liked. Neither fighter has been knocked down. He didn't look rock the way he should have, the way the champ opened up on him, and I think that can be very discouraging. This was a beautiful uh, ending of the round for the champ because he, he had some good blows in there, some hard blows. Chavalo did not look like it, uh, it really affected him. We're moving over here now to uh, the champ's corner. Maybe we can pick up a little sound. Let's try. Number 12. Come on. I said, That was manager Angelo Dundee talking with the champ. There's the bell for round 12. The champion appears determined to open it up.
The champion is unmarked. Shabalo has some swelling around the left eye. But nothing to worry about. Halfway through round 12. three rounds, Jim. You care to make a guess? Well, actually, I think it's going to be uh, to the champion's advantage to keep boxing, keep scoring, and probably forget about the knockout. Of course, I was hoping he would go for the knockout just to see if uh, he did have that punch. I think he has taken his best shots on occasion and found that uh, George just didn't go down. That's right. There have been uh, two occasions that that has happened. That's Irv Ungerman that's just facing the camera. The manager of George Chevallo. <laughs> Round 13 coming up. There's the bell. Chevallo's up first this time. Shavalo knows 
Rose, if he could hit him that one deathly shot, he'd be seconds away from fame and fortune. The bell ending, round 13. Jim, there was a lot of criticism about this match. And a lot of people were saying it never should have been held and that it was some sort of a social injustice being foisted upon the customers. <laughs> they sound rather happy, don't they? That's right. The fans seem to be very happy tonight, especially when uh, Chevalo gets in a couple of good blows, and that he has done tonight. The champion has now gone further than he has ever gone in his career before, 13 rounds. He looks fresh enough. He looks like he can go another two. Oh, yes. He's definitely going to be able to go another two, uh, Hal. But I think in his mind is uh, the last Patterson fight, wherein he did not finish Patterson when people thought he could. Round 14 coming up. Scheduled for 15 rounds. He looks a little tired right now, Hal. There's Joe Lewis, who had his head up just uh, the top head on the screen. Well, he has a corner uh, filled up with celebrities. Uh, Drew Bodini Brown, I think, is over there. He's not working with him, but he did work with him two weeks prior to the fight. That's Ted McWhorter facing us through the arms. As you know, Hal, uh, Brown worked with Floyd for many uh, years. McWhorter is exhorting the Canadian champion He's 
got to go out there and do it in the 15th round and try to build them out. This is it. The 15th round coming up. Commissioner of Athletics, L.M. McKenzie. The five-point must system used in the scoring of points. The winner of a round must receive five points. The loser, a lesser number. If a round is scored even, each fighter is to receive five points. The scoring is decided by a majority decision of the referees and the two judges. So now, we await the count, the decision of referee Jackie Silvers and the judges, Tony Canzano and Jackie Johnson. Here's the official decision, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Referee Jackie. 